Howdy, welcome back to Dion Talk. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the mistake that I made in my episode of Bigger Pockets. It was episode 448, and it's available here on YouTube, pretty easy to find. They actually warned me that I was probably going to make this mistake, and even with that warning, I still did it. If you're familiar at all with my content, and you watch the episode, you know that one small mistake that I made was I wanted to mention the book One Rental at a Time. I've actually got a video where I did a review and a free giveaway of this book. I've been on the podcast of One Rental at a Time. I know Michael Zuber, he's a great guy. An example of that is when I reached out to him to let him know that I was doing a review and going to be giving away an audible copy of his book, he said, that's great. And he wanted to give away a signed copy of his book. So he did that uh, through my review. But in my interview on Bigger Pockets, I had his name written on a post-it in front of me and I did it wrong. I said Michael Zuber, not Michael Gruber, because I'd messed that up in my head a couple of times. And in the interview, I read it wrong. And when I let him know, he just kind of laughed. He said, yeah, I'm used to that. <laughs> so that's actually not the mistake I'm here to talk about today. If you're like me and you watched a lot of Bigger Pockets episodes, I watch as much as possible, I think. I think I've seen every episode of their real estate show, some of them two or three times. I watch Bigger Pockets Money, Bigger Pockets Business, the Real Estate Rookie Podcast. I tend to be a content binger. I can watch Stargate SGU through, I can watch Dexter through, I can take a TV show and watch the whole thing. And while it's very entertaining, it's a time sink. When I'm binging things like Bigger Pockets, or Minority Mindset, or Graham Stephan, or Meet Kevin, and I'm taking in information that's actually helping me go from a really bad position. You know, I was in a lot of debt, I'm a single parent with three kids, and I chose to binge things that would actually benefit me financially. And within 10 years, I've learned how to make myself completely financially independent, and one of the reasons I have this YouTube channel is I'm trying to share that with people. I'm trying to show the average person that within 10 years or less, even if you're starting from a bad position, you can reach financial freedom. And I'm not saying that you have to go completely addictive like I do and binge every episode, but there is a lot to learn from the content put out by companies like Bigger Pockets. So while I'm watching shows like Bigger Pockets and the Real Estate Rookie podcast where they have guests come on, I would kind of mentally picture the format. You know, how would a story look if you were sharing your content? What questions do they ask? How does the deal deep dive work? What are the famous four? And uh, I would think how I would answer those questions. And thinking how I would answer those questions actually helped me be better at investing because I would want to have a good answer. And having watched the Bigger Pockets real estate show probably for thousands of hours, I have a pretty good idea of what the format is, but I still made the same mistake that David Green warned me that I would probably make. And the editing crew for Bigger Pockets did such a good job, they actually made it look like I didn't make this mistake, so I need to thank them. If somehow you've never seen a Bigger Pockets episode, I'll take the time to explain how the deal deep dive works. And I noticed this when I was watching it long before I thought there was ever a shot that I would even get a chance to be on a show like Bigger Pockets. And hopefully you're catching on now that it was in the deal deep dive that I made my mistake. So as a content consumer, the deal deep dive seems pretty straightforward. Somebody's going to explain the details of an actual property that they purchased. And for me, this is kind of my favorite part of the show. I would like to see several deal deep dives clipped together so I could just watch a couple hours of people talking about their experience of buying a property. But let's look at the deal deep dive from a content producer's viewpoint. Brandon and David have questions that they want to ask in a certain order, and they take turns as to who asks which question. Before we started recording the show, we were just talking, and they actually asked me if I had a property that I planned to use as a deal deep dive. I said that I did, and David said that one of the problems that they have is guests get very excited when they start talking about their purchase. As an investor, if you've purchased a property, think about this. If somebody asked you a question about that, but they only wanted you to answer that question and not give more details, how hard would it be to wait for the next follow-up question? So even though they warned me, that I was gonna get excited and get ahead of their questions. That's exactly what I did. So if you really listen to the episode, there's a point where Brendan has to kind of recap the questions that we've gone through because some of them they didn't ask, but I covered. So in a form of apology, someday I'm gonna to go to Hawaii and I'm gonna take them both out to Brendan's favorite restaurant, Monkey Paw. But not today. But like David said, I'm probably gonna to have to take out a loan to do it. If you ever get on the Bigger Pocket show, find out the questions for the deal deep dive. 
have your answers ready and know the following questions that are coming so that you don't answer them before they're even asked. I really want to thank the whole Bigger Pockets community for all of the support. I said it on my episode, but I was pretty sure that when I made this YouTube channel, I would get 50% likes and 50% dislikes because my strategy has mostly involved investing in small multifamily. Some of them I house hacked, I self manage. So since I don't invest in stocks, I figured everybody who invests in stocks would not like me. And since I invest in small multifamily, I thought everybody who invested in commercial wouldn't like me. And since I've house hacked a couple of times, I figured people who can't house hack for whatever reason wouldn't like me. But this community seems to be full of people who understand that my way is not the only way. And some aspect of what I have done can be applied to what you're doing. Maybe not the whole strategy, maybe not even a big part of the strategy, but something that you can use. And I've seen that by the comments. So every time you leave a comment below, it lets YouTube know that someone likes my content and it shares my content with other people because there are a lot of people that are trapped working for a job that don't know that it's possible to even ever, let alone within 10 years, make work optional. As a reward for anybody who made it this far in the video, a really quick tip. When you're saving money to have the down payment, immediate repairs, and closing costs when you're purchasing a property, don't forget that you also need reserves. Lenders are usually going to require three months of principal interest taxes and insurance for every mortgage that you have. So the quick tip is, I've been able to do this using a retirement account as my reserves. Lenders will recognize 50% of a retirement account as a reserve for you. You don't have to tap it, you don't have to pull the money out, you just have to prove that the money's in there. So while you're saving that money to actually purchase the property, you don't have to have reserves and cash available. It's best if you do, but it's not a requirement. And if you've watched a few of my videos, you know that one of the things that I like to do is kind of confuse the people who left the video early. So do me a favor. In the comments below, just leave, thank you for the tip at the end. If you would like to connect to see if I can help you answer specific questions that might help you figure out what the next steps are on your path to financial freedom, I'm completely okay with connecting. The best way to get a hold of me is on Facebook, Dion McNeely on Facebook. Just message me. If you've sent me a friend request and I didn't accept it, it's because I get a lot of fake requests. So just send a message asking a question and then I'll be able to accept your friend request. I'm sure everybody understands that Facebook has a limit of friends of 5,000. So I'm getting really close to hitting that. And if I do, I can still answer your questions even if we're not connected as friends. Just send me a message. I really hope I made it worth your time clicking on this video today. If you liked it, if you thought you got anything out of it, or if you at least laughed a little at my mistake, hit like, hit subscribe, and hit the notification bell because then the YouTube brain knows that somebody liked my content and it's more likely to share it with someone else. Until my next video, Thanks for coming to my Dion talk. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.